to receive spiritual things from God. There's a spiritual arm you need. There's a spiritual eyes you need. There's a spiritual mind. So, may we not starve in our generation. The Bible says God is spirit. God is what? Uh -huh. So, you can't change anything. He can't become a man because of you. He came to put on flesh and blood. Then, when he was returning with flesh and blood, he made sure that that flesh and blood he was wearing, which is Jesus, he made sure it became an immortal flesh and blood. Because when we die, the Bible says we all resurrect again, our body will come back. For now, this mortality will become immortality. For now, God is spirit. God is what? Spirit have his own hand. Spirit have their own eyes. Spirit have their own thoughts, feeling. I gave the boys that were with me an assignment this week. And I want you to go and do that assignment also to help you. I said, if there's eyes for the physical, the natural body, if there's ear, if there's feeling, these are the senses, the physical senses, sight, touch, which is feeling, taste, yeah, and also the natural mind. I say, what does the spirit use? What is the spiritual hand God uses? If you have physical hand, what is your spiritual hand? You go and learn it. Go and do this assignment. If you have physical eyes, what is your spiritual eyes? If there is a physical way to feel, what is your own spiritual way to feel? If there is a spiritual way to taste, how do people taste in their spirit? So you go and do those assignments. If God permits, I will teach you on Sunday. All these things are the way to receive from God. If you don't learn this, with your natural eye. He said, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. What of if God has already given you all those things you have been asking for? Meanwhile, you don't have the spiritual hand to take it. What of if God is already showing you spiritually the business you should do, how your business should prosper, but you don't have the spiritual eyes to see it? You are not looking. Because even God is interested in everything that concerns you, even your business. In Genesis 31, 10, he said, and it happened at the time when the flocks conceived that I lifted my eyes and saw in a dream, behold, the rams which lived upon the flocks were strict speckled and gray spotted. Then the angel of the Lord spoke to me in a dream, saying, Jacob, and I said, here I am. And he said, lift your eyes now and see all the rams which leap on the flock are strict, speckled and gray spotted for I have seen all that Laban is doing to you. I am the Lord God of Bethel where you anointed the pillar and where you made a vow to me. Now arise, get out of this land and return to the land of your family. Look at spiritual instruction. You are not supposed to be here. One. Then number two, he showed him why his business was progressing. Why you are having many? Because now, him and his uncle said, okay, this one, the spotted, the uncle says it's for me. The one that is not spotted is for you. So, in the time of reproduction, all the female that we are reproducing, we are reproducing all the ones that are not spotted for Jacob to receive it. And the angel of the Lord said, the reason why you are multiplying, this is what is going on in the realm of the spirits. That's why your business is increasing. There's a sight in the spirit. So, I've always told you that the first thing the Holy Ghost came to give us, a sight, vision. He said, in the last day, you will receive the spirit of God. You will be able to dream, dream. You will be able to see vision and you will be able to prophesy. Why is it that the first thing God came to give you is sight? The natural man cannot receive all that God has made available. Doesn't matter whether it's God that came down, the Father Himself that come down to you. If you are still carnal, you can't receive from Him. So God is training us this season so that we'll be able to take from God all He has made available for us. 
we'll be able to see what he's showing us. We'll be able to go where he wants us to be. We'll be able to sense when there's danger around us. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things. Yet himself is not rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So this is why in this year of supernatural, we are training all these senses so that we'll do all God is showing, manifesting, revealing, saying, we hear what he's saying. Or Robert wrote a book. He said, if you can see the invisible, you will do the impossible. So go and buy that book and read it. Don't be nonchalant as a Christian and so complacent. Waiting for people to put food in your mouth. Take step this year. Take spiritual step. May God give us understanding. In the name of Jesus. Say, oh Lord. I know. I have a spiritual hand. Reveal it to me. I know. I have a spiritual eyes. Open it for me. I know. I have a spiritual ear. Open it for me. I know. I have a spiritual taste. Unveil it to me. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Father, unveil, reveal, unveil, reveal. This year, that should be your deepest prayer. Unveil and reveal. Show me. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. I want to see. We see you are lifted up. You are shining in the light of your serious the world is going very deep and if you are not careful the way the world is traveling you become an enemy of God and yet you claim to be a Christian you can be God's enemy and you profess the faith the Bible says in Romans 8 from verse 4 that the righteousness requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh. Do you understand that? Our mobility is not in the flesh realm. It is not what we add from the flesh that is propelling us to act. Remember the last teaching I taught for last year? On Friday, everybody must go and look for that message. The secret place of the Most High. But God does not work with fact, proof, evidence. He works with revelation. If you are a Christian in this last day, because he said, we do not work according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit, because the flesh works with facts, proof, evidence, but the Spirit works with truth and truth is revealed 
because fact is Potiphar's wife holding Joseph garments. Evidence is she's holding the garments. Proof is she's holding the garments. But truth is it was framed. If you are in this last day <laughs> and proof, evidence are what you are living in, then the devil is your master. You can profess to be a Christian. You are only a son when you are led by the Spirit. As many as are led by the Spirit, as many as seen from the sight of the Spirit, we taste from the Spirit, we sense, we discern, we perceive we are the sons of God. This last day will not be complete. The body of Christ will not understand until the teaching and the revealing of the truth that we are the sons of God that creation is waiting to manifest. We are not Christian. We are sons of God. We are the God that have come down in the likeness of men. And all those shallow thoughts, shallow mentality of I'm just a man is the problem that is bringing decadence to the revealing of the grace and the power of God in our generation. And I refuse to be called a mere man. I refuse anybody, any friend, any brother, sister, or any believer that is moving around our company that is saying we are just humans, we are just flesh. They are not part of us. They are not of us. If you are part of the Father, if you are one with the Father, you will know that he said, I am God and there is no other beside me. No other human being, no other God, no other flesh. There's only one God, one Father, one Spirit. And that Spirit is also the Spirit that is in you. My wisdom is not from men. Jesus said, my doctrine is not from men. We walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Verse 5. He said, for those who live according to the flesh, set their mind on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So if you are not experiencing peace, you are not spiritually minded. The first proof that you are spiritual is that you have peace in the midst of the storm. Restlessness, fear, anxiety is a proof you are carnal. Because we saw the father of all spirits putting on human body and he was in the midst of the storm and the storm was boisterous. And he was sleeping in the midst of the storm. And when, when, when those walking in the flesh were crying when he woke up, the Bible says, he said to the sea, peace be still. And there was a question. He said, where is your faith? Whatever you are seeing in your personal life, in the society, in the economy, is yet to begin. We are in the perilous time. And things will become more wicked and difficult. But let me tell you something. Spiritual intelligence has been there for, for long. God has wanted his children to work in spiritual intelligence. So the first thing he did when he found Abraham, our father of faith, is get thee out of your father's house. Meaning get thee out of the flesh realm. And in verse 6 and 7, Abraham built an altar in Genesis 12, 6, 12. So that is the first spiritual intelligence. He built an altar. Because when God departed from men, when Adam fell, normally if God was coming, man bear witness that God is around. God does not come to the ground. He does not, you know, when a train wants to travel, it needs a rail. When a plane wants to land, it needs what? Then if a ship wants to, it needs where? A port. God bless you. So in those days, God normally, when he, when he wants to come to the earth, he bear witness in the spirit of man that is around. Through the heart of man. That is where he comes. But now when Adam fell, 
God did not have a place to, to come again. So he started using altars. That's why the first thing Cain and Abel did was to build an altar. So if you want to call God now, if you are trying to tell him, come, come, God need an altar. So when God started distributing Abraham, giving him land, giving him inheritance, Abraham was going from one place to another. All the land God said we give Abraham, you know what he was doing there? He was erecting altar. He will go to this place, he will erect altar. He will go to this place, he will erect altar. He will go to this place, he will erect altar. The reason why was that this is spiritual intelligence that he's trying to do. So that the days when the children of Israel will start going to that same land, they will not need physical strength to fight. All those altars are already hosting host of angels. The land where your enemies are staying, if you have built an altar there, that land will be fighting your enemies. May your spiritual eyes be open. Because the Lord said, Jezebel has sent a letter to the church. Do you know who is Jezebel? Everybody that is here, whether you believe it or not, Jezebel will send a letter to you. It will send to your family. Tell me about Jezebel. I sent a letter to the church. Mm. When the children of Israel came out from Egypt, the first thing God, the assignment God first had to do was to train them into spiritual intelligence. So in the book of Exodus 20, from verse 7, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep the Sabbath day. You shall not murder. These are spiritual intelligence now. You shall not what? Yes. Two. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. Don't see somebody's car and say, eh, I wish it's me that have this car. Don't see somebody's wife and say, I wish this was my wife. I want to show you all the problems is coming from now. Don't look at somebody's esteem and desire it. It's called covetousness. All sin comes from this covetous. When you become covetous, there's no extent you can't do. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. Anything. Don't covet it. Let's see the book of First King. Remember this scripture you just read now. If you have your pen and paper there, write these things I'm going to call for you. Write the name Ahab. Number two, write Naboth. Number three, write Vineyard. Number four, write inheritance. Number five, write Jezebel. There's a movie we want to act now. Are you ready for the movie? Now, Ahab represents the kings and authorities of this earth. Write it. Naboth means word or prophecy or flourishing. Or sprouting, meaning growing. Divine at death means your spiritual inheritance from God. But it can also mean the church. You see, Jesus always makes example of vineyard in Luke 20 from verse 9. Then he began to tell the people this parable. A certain man planted a vineyard. You see? Jesus was always using vineyard. He's talking about this word or anything that belongs to God that he gave to men. Then inheritance. Galatians 4 from verse 1. Where you saw inheritance. Put Galatians 4 from verse 1. He said, now I say that the heir, as long as he's a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he's a master of all. But he's under guidance and steward until the time appointed by the father. For you to be an heir, meaning 
you are qualified for an inheritance. Every one of you here now, if you have children and you are a billionaire, your child is your heir. Everything that belongs to you belongs to that child. So God is saying we are heir. Everything that belongs to him belongs to us. Do you see that? That's not of inheritance. You can't have an inheritance until you become the person's heir. So the Bible says we are heirs of salvation. So I'm taking you gradually because there's a story you need to learn. Now, 1 Kings 21 from verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth, Naboth means prophecy, remember? The Jezalites had a vineyard and inheritance from God, which was in Jezreel, next to the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. So Ahab spoke to Naboth saying, give me your vineyard. What is the first spiritual intelligence I told you in Exodus? Don't covet your neighbor's property. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. Nor his male servant or his female servant. Nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor. It's called spiritual what? So if the devil now is speaking to you now, say, look at that woman and she's already somebody's wife. You already know that you should shun him. Showing you somebody's car. Showing you somebody's house. Say, I wish it's you that have it. Showing you somebody's property. You don't need, this is how to stop temptation. If you don't know that this is wrong, you will start meditating on it. And from meditation, you will begin to take actions. Do you know who is inspiring those actions? The spirit of covetousness. The devil only comes to you and see what the, the kind of ideology you have. Then he makes you to act. Your ideology is what the devil sees. Now, things begin first in the realms of idea, thought. Ahab was thinking about it. He said, give me your vine that I may have it for a vegetable garden. Because it is near, next to my house. And for it, I will give you a vineyard better than it. Or if it seems good to you, I will give you his words in money. But Naboth said to Ahab, the Lord forbid that I should give you the inheritance of my father to you. Remember, there's a lot of things God has given to you. The devil desire it. So Ahab went to his house, solemn and displeased because of the word which Naboth, the Jezalite, have spoken to him. For he has said, I will not give you the inheritance of my fathers. And he lay down on his bed and turned away from his face and would not eat food. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said to him, Why is your spirit so solemn that you eat no food? He said to her, Because I spoke to Naboth the Jezelite and said to him, Give me your vineyard for money, or else, if it pleases you, I will give you another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give you my vineyard. Now see what Jezebel his wife said. You now exercise authority over Israel. Arise, eat food, and let your heart be cheerful. I will give you the vineyard of Naboth the Drezelite. Now, this shows us that every wickedness starts with a thought or idea. It starts with what? Hmm. A thought. When he said a carnal mind is a mind that does not follow. Remember he said the carnal mind does, is not subject to the laws of God. So Ahab had a carnal mind. And when you have a carnal mind, you will have suggestions from demons. Demons will suggest to you that you are poor. Demons will suggest to you that you are sick. Demons suggest to you people's property. These are you just become enemy of God. Not knowing the law of God. Remember we read that in Romans 8. The carnal mind is enemy of God. Because it is not subject to the laws of God. And what is the law of God? Don't covert. So if you just know this, you have already separated yourself from the enemy. When the enemy knows that you are not spiritually intelligent, you are just uh, living your life with carnal mind, demons can suggest to you. They can say, hey, 
What do you think? Let us go and fight for that land. Let us kill for it. Let us go to Isangoma to make sure we get what we are looking for. Let us go to dating site to find husband. So the carnal mind brings demonic suggestion. Then number two, when you write demonic suggestion, write operation of flesh and blood. When the idea comes, demonic suggestion comes, then your flesh and blood begin to act under what you have had. In verse 8, see that. And she wrote letters in Ahab's name, sealed them with seal, and sent the letters to the elders, authorities, and the nobles who were dwelling in the city with Naboth. She wrote in the letters, saying, Proclaim a fast and sit Naboth with high honor among the people. And sit two men, scoundrels, vagabonds, frustrated, discontented people, that's the meaning of that. Sit two witness before him to bear witness against him, saying, You are blasphemed against God and the king. Then take him out and stone him that he may die. Are you seeing now wickedness is coming from thoughts, from a carnal kind of mind to flesh and blood acting? Everything you are seeing in your life came from this hierarchy I'm showing you now. First of all, you are the thought that you are poor, you are sick, you don't know what God is saying concerning sickness. Carnal mind will tell you that you will sick and die. A carnal mind will tell you that you can't possess your possession. A carnal mind will tell you that time is going because you don't know the laws of God. Then you begin to act in the flesh. When the mind, when the carnal mind has spoken, because you don't know the law of God, you begin to act in the flesh. Everything, be struggling just to make sure you acquire all what God has deposited for you in the spirit realm is there in the spirit. You want to try to get it in your flesh. It's as if a spirit that does not have a body is trying to take this mic away from me. The Holy Spirit, you and I know, cannot hold this mic. The Holy Spirit can only hold this mic through me. You can only receive what God has made available to you through the hands of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit can only give to the poor through you. The Holy Spirit cannot hold a bag of rice and say, take. The Holy Spirit cannot open a shop and be doing business. He do it through you. The Holy Spirit cannot revive a nation by himself. He do it through you. He need you. You need him. Do you hear what I'm saying? Now see, now the men started acting through flesh and blood. I don't know how many of you that is walking through flesh and blood. Jezebel is the one inspiring you. That's why I said Jezebel has sent people letters. Now elders, so some of the men of his city, the elders, the nobles, who were inhabitants of this city, did as Jezebel had sent to them. And as it was written in the letters, which she had sent to them. They proclaimed a fast, seated Naboth with high honor among the people. And the two men, the scoundrels, came and sat before him. And the scoundrels witnessed against him against Naboth in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth has blasphemed God and the king. And then they took him outside the city and they stoned him with stones so that he died. Remember I said Naboth means prophecy. It means word. It means utterance. It means flourishing. Naboth represents all the things God has told you. Jezebel will fight it. Yeah, when you get to check the meaning of Naboth, you see what I'm saying? All the prophecy, all what God said to you, all the promises that you have received from God, Jezebel will kick against it. He, he will stone it. Jezebel wants to stone everything God said to you. He wants to stone it to death. Then he will make you to be acting in flesh and blood and not believe everything God said to you. Naboth said, I will not give you my inheritance. There's something God has given to me by his word. Do you see the connection? Naboth, inheritance, vineyard. Jezebel is looking for it. Jezebel is looking for your inheritance. Jezebel is looking for the word God said to you. And Jezebel wants to kick you from the vineyard God has given to you. When that young man died, Jezebel sent a message, said, Naboth is dead. The prophecy have died. I have made them to walk in the flesh. She made the elders, the nobles, 
to act in the flesh. Then prophecy died. The word of God disappeared. The Bible says in verse 17, and it was revealed to Elijah the prophet. I don't know what the devil have keyed concerning you. God is bringing them to life again. Yeah. Verse 17. See verse 17. This is the word of the Lord for you. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite. Because the carnal mind have operated, the flesh has operated, then God's spirit reacted. I want to tell you something now. This will help you in your life. Anytime things are happening around you in our generation, don't believe everything you hear. Remember how it started. It was a demonic suggestion. When it progressed from idea suggestion, it came to the flesh. People started reacting in the flesh by killing Nabot. Sometimes, God remains silent until the carnal mind has operated, the flesh has operated, then before revelation comes. So be very careful not to accept the carnal mind or to accept what flesh and blood is saying. Anything that you see around you, don't speak. You see, we are too quick to accept carnal things. We are too quick to act in flesh and blood. So now we are not even waiting for the Spirit of the Lord to reveal to us what has happened. So I'm saying to you, hearing my voice, if you are always operating from flesh and blood, Jezebel is your Lord and personal Savior. Now the church of this generation is lost because we don't descend things, we don't wait for God to speak, we are moved by flesh and blood. We walk in spirit, not in the flesh. So that means we don't judge things from the flesh realm. We judge from the spirit realm. When we have asked God, we descend. If God has not spoken concerning a matter, be quiet. This generation need help. I feel for this generation. It was revealed to Elijah what has happened. When the carnal mind was operating, God was quiet. When flesh and blood, you call yourself elder, you call yourself nobles, and Jezebel sent a letter. You didn't pray to hear what God is saying, you just acted from Jezebel's letter. And you say, I'm a Christian for 20 years. That's the meaning of elder. I'm an evangelist. I'm a prophet. I'm a pastor. That is the meaning of noble. So you say you are a prophet of God and it's Jezebel later that is inspiring you to act. <laughs> you are commenting according to Jezebel later. This is just what is happening in the society. What of your own life? That means ever since in your life, it's Jezebel that has been directing you. <laughs> yes. Is Jezebel later. You know, Jezebel later is very powerful. In the book of 1 Kings 19, from verse 1, when Elijah has killed all the sons of the prophets, and Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah has done, also how he has executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, the woman that likes sending message. Tell your neighbor, there's a WhatsApp in the spirit. Jezebel is sending and God is also sending. Look at the scripture we just read. Two people were dead. Some people call themselves elders and nobles. Another one called himself Elijah the prophet. Before the letter of God came, the letter of Jezebel came first. And the nobles and elders, which is Christians of nowadays, they got it. They got notification and they check. Is it Naboth blasphemy against God? And they brought false witness against him and they stoned him to death. 
after they have acted, then God now sent his own WhatsApp message. You think you are the first to start using WhatsApp? Jezebel was there before you. Which WhatsApp group are you? Which WhatsApp group are you? Who sent you message? And let me tell you something. Jezebel message is so strong and toxic that even if you don't want to receive it, she forces herself to it. If you don't attend to it, resist it. So you can't run away from Jezebel message. Is it that you resist it or you run away from it? And if you run away, you are in danger. She told Elijah, 1 King 19 verse 1, he said, may the Lord do so to me and more if I don't kill you. And Elijah said, no, 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 I can't bear this. He started running away. Now, imagine a prophet of God is acting under the letter of Jezebel. What of you? Elijah, same Elijah that should know that Jezebel always sent message and she have misled people to kidnap but same Elijah got a message from Jezebel and started acting in flesh and blood and said let me die that was the statement he used he said I'm not better than my fathers that is flesh and blood acting let me die but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat under a broom tree and he prayed that he might die and said it is enough now Lord take my life I am not better than my father this is how powerful Jezebel later can provoke you you will feel like dying feel like committing suicide feel as if the world has tired you are, you are tired of the whole world anytime you are feeling like that Jezebel has sent a whatsapp message to you and do you know that this whatsapp message did not end there when Elijah ran away and told God that he wants to die, God really took his life. And Jesus said something. That Elijah will come again and he will be John. John the Baptist. That was what the prophet they said. He said, before the last day, I will send the spirit of Elijah again. And he came as John. Because in the book of Matthew 11 from verse 14, Jesus said, if you will believe it, John the Baptist, he said, if you are willing to receive it, it is Elijah who is to come. He's talking about John the Baptist here. The message did not end. Even if you died and left it physically, you ran away from the message. Elijah thought he was running away fleshly. He did not know that the letter will also appear in the New Testament. So when John became Elijah, the same John that was baptizing, and he got a message from God when he saw Jesus, when he was baptizing him. He said, I saw the Spirit descending on him like a dove. He received a message from God. And when he was in the prison, then Jezebel sent another letter to him. And he rebelled against God. He said, when he had all the miracles Jesus was doing with his carnal ears, he said, are you the one that should come or should we wait for another? This generation of the church is under the influence of Jezebel later. Acting in flesh and blood. Walking in the carnal mind. Your information is not from God. Yes. You are eyewitness. It's on the news. Uh, Potiphar's wife was holding the garment of Joseph. Life and direct. Look at it. It's on the news. It's on all social media. And everybody saw Joseph run. Not wearing clothes when he came out. They took a photograph of him. <laughs> Jezebel have sent her later. The devil is still here to do more. What you are seeing now, you have, you have not. As far as you say you want to live in this sense realm. What I see. What I hear. What I feel. What I taste. <laughs> Be ready. And the carnal mind. Be ready for the devil. Because he will send many messengers to you. May God save us. But the church have an assignment. 
in Revelation 17 from verse 1. This is the assignment God wants for this. He said, Then one of the seven angels, who are the seven bows, came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great Allot, who sits on many waters, crowd of people, the judgment of Jezebel, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he, he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet, a scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple scarlet, adorned with gold and precious stone and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abomination and the fitness of her fornication. And on her forehead was written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of Allot, and the abominations of the earth. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. This is why Christians are killing each other. The spirit of Jezebel possesses many Christians. You don't know the time and season that you are in. You think it's time and season of I want to marry, I want to have a business, I want to, I want to break through. That's not the time and season where you are in. This is the time and season we are in. Jezebel is drinking the blood of believers. And do you know who, 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 who give it to her? It's we, the church. We donate our brothers. We donate our sister. We stone them to death. May God save us. Amen. Revelation 18, verse 1. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated bed. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of our fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchant of the earth has become rich through the abundance of her luxury. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Come out of her information. Come out of her leading. Come out of her later. Lest you share in her sin. And lest you receive of her plague. For her sin have reached to the heaven. And God has remembered her iniquities. Render to her just as she has rendered to you. Repay her double according to her works. In the cup which she has mixed, mix double for her. In the measure that she has glorified herself and lives luxury, in the same measure give to her. Give to her torment and sorrow. For she says in her heart, I sit as a queen and I'm, I'm no widow and will not see sorrow. Therefore a plague will come in one day. Death and mourning and famine and she will be utterly born with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judges her. The kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived luxury with her will weep and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning. Standing at a distance for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, the great city, Babylon, the mighty city, for in one hour your judgment has come. God is saying the church should judge the kingdom of darkness now. The spirit of Jezebel. 1 King 21 25. But there was no one like Ahab who sold himself to wickedness in the sight of the Lord because Jezebel, his wife, stirred him up. Who is stirring the church up now? Think about it. Anywhere you see wickedness is the spirit of Babylon that has possessed the people. There's no one as wicked as the people in the church now because Jezebel is the one stirring us, not what God said. First, Jezebel stirred the king, stirred the nobles of the land, stirred the elders that they should kill Naboth. Who is stirring you? You, you that is saying you hate. <laughs> you, you, you exposed. Who is stirring you? It means no human being is doing anything of their own. Is it that God is leading you or Jezebel is stirring you? Be wise. 
So Jesus said to Peter, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you. There are information that flesh and blood reveals. Those information are from Jezebel. He said, but my father who is in heaven. Our greatest enemy in this generation is flesh and blood. Is what? So God warned us. He said, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Jesus said, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you. Paul said, when God called him, he did not confide in flesh and blood. Who is talking to you? Paul said, flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom of God. Your greatest enemy is flesh and blood. Tell your neighbor, your greatest enemy is flesh and blood. That is how, that is how the devil gets access to you. There are informations. There are voices that come from flesh and blood. There are news that came from flesh and blood. I have learned many years as a prophet because in the training of being a prophet, I've acted in the flesh a lot. And God will say, this was what I was saying. This is what he went to do. After a long time, So then I asked, how will I know what you are saying? Is it patience? Because when the storm comes, the voice of God was not there. When thunder came, the voice of God was not there. When the earthquake came, the voice of God was not there. When everything has come, God spoke. When there's still noise everywhere, God will be silent. What God needs to strip us from is flesh and blood acting reacting with flesh and blood because God can reveal something to you but because you are still wearing flesh and blood another message come you will forget the one God told you because it was on the same mountain where Jesus said Simon flesh and blood have not revealed this to you but my father who is in heaven the same place the Bible said Jesus started speaking of I will die then the same Peter started rebuking Jesus and Jesus said get behind me Satan instantly the same person you said my father revealed to you the same person again you are calling Satan it doesn't matter what God has told you the devil will also come and speak and let me tell you when the devil comes to speak he brings proof evidence facts the greatest enemy of truth is evidence, facts, and proof. They are, they are the enemy. I've told you before, the God you are serving, I told them, does not have these physical eyes. God does not see what you see. God does not have physical eyes. God does not have physical hand. God does not have physical leg. God does not have physical tongue. If at all, God wants to see physical things. He sees it through your eyes. He himself doesn't have it. If I talk, God wants to touch this person, he touched through my own physical hand. We need God as God needs us. Because when God says, the heaven is my throne, the earth is my first tool. First tool means walking. Meaning we are working for God. That's what it means. It means you are God's leg doing everything you need to do on it. That's me of fools too. It's talking about. Make sure you are patient in spirit. That's the way out for you this last day. You have to be very patient in spirit. Very what? the despondency you see today in the church if we personalize it you know let's overlook what is going on with people what they are saying different things about people bring it down to you is what the devil is also doing to people's personal life he has given them a letter that make them hate themselves 
when people begin to question their faith now, no, people are questioning their faith. Some are questioning what they believed before. Joseph, you, you that I thought you were born again, Joseph, you, Joseph, I've been looking up to you, you. Ah, uh, many years ago when I was an usher, I've never even have a girlfriend, Chef. I don't know girl. I don't have girlfriend. I never talked to any girl once. We were sitting at Osha. They were respecting me there as born again Osha. If it's time for prayer, as Osha gather, it's me they always point to pray. One day while we were sitting as Osha doing our meeting, one pastor came. He's Osha pastor. Started pointing people. He said, you, you do this one. You, repent to. Then he came to me and said, you like women. You have to be. Uh, yeah, yeah. You are laughing. You, you, your problem is you too like women. And I was like, and our usher leader said, talk now. If it's not true, talk now. Because they, they esteemed me to be born again. And they say, you, you too like women. That's your problem. And I was just quiet looking at him. The head of Usher said, talk now if it's not true. In my heart, I said, I should say, Pastor is lying. I will not say it. It was painful. But I kept silence. And everybody was laughing at me. Then you are laughing. And some Nazareth thinking, oh, he has been pretending. But I did not open my mouth. The Bible says, as a sheep he going to a shearer, so he opened not his mouth. I don't have any evidence. I don't have any proof. I don't have any fact. They say I like women. So it's true. Truth does not need evidence. Truth does not even reply. Truth does not reply because truth should be revealed. If I was pretending then, by now, the ushers should know whether I was pretending. My secret life will tell in future. My righteousness will tell. I don't need to speak. Oh, well, I, will, I will be telling the man of God, you are lying. I don't, I don't even know women in the and those that were usher were up to 100 and something. Start saying, man of God is lying. It pained me that day. I went home very sad. Because when it was, because normally now, when it's time for ushers to pray, normally they always point me to pray. But after that moment, they pointed somebody else. That's where I start. That's called the letter of Jezebel. And anytime Jezebel sent later, I will you, you, that they are speaking, how will you react? God is not expecting us to react. He's expecting us to intercede, pray. You don't need to say anything. I, I'm innocent, I'm innocent. I'm innocent. I'm not innocent before men. I'm innocent before God. That's what truth say. In the sight of men, everybody is guilty. In the eyes of men, everybody is what? That's why men will say, nobody is perfect. Everybody makes mistakes. Yes, that's true in the eyes of men. But what how does God see you? He says you are the righteousness of God. In Christ, God sees you through Christ. So God will not see you as imperfect. God sees you as perfect. But men always see you imperfect. He touched me that day. Oh God, he told it. The flesh say, respond, respond, respond. The Spirit of God say, be quiet. It will be revealed. Your life, your Christian life, your secret place will be revealed. Are you hearing me? Many of you, when the devil tempts you, provoke you, you get, you get to react with flesh and blood.
you know how many times you have reacted with flesh and blood? Think about it. Anytime there is a problem, the first thing that I want to always react is your flesh. So don't be quiet. Oh. If you're quiet, they go use you. No, show them. Oh. Show them. Say now you. Show them what. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. God says vengeance is what? Is him. So why are you fighting for God? If Jerubabel, the Gideon, when Gideon destroyed the altar of Ba, his father said, if Ba be Ba, let him fight for himself. If God is God, let him fight. <laughs> Meaning, if I hear anything about you, I shouldn't condemn you. If God is God, he should speak to you. He should, he should attend to you. What the Lord was showing us when Peter was captured and put in prison. Remember, Peter is a representative of the church. He's a metaphor of the church. He was sleeping. The Bible said, the church, constant prayer was made by the church. If your enemy use I on you, you respond with I. You will not see the power of God. If they use hand for you, you respond with your hand. You will not see the power of God. When in Acts 12, from verse 1, he said, And Herod harassed the church. Do you think the church harassment have ended? It will be worse now. We will be more harassed now. When Herod is harassing the church, what is the best thing to do, flesh and blood? Let us revolt. No, we're not going to agree. How many of us will agree? <laughs> Let's say solidarity forever. Solidarity. Let's go and fight. Let's go and campaign against. We can't tolerate it anymore. We are the church. We're not going to agree. Everybody carry wood, carry plant card. Let us go into the streets. Let us go to social media. Let us speak. We are the church. We can't be quiet anymore. These are confused people acting under the letter of Jezebel. The Bible says Peter was put in prison, but constant prayer was made for him by the church. Whatever is going on around us, what God wants us to do is to constantly pray. That's the solution. Constantly what? When Elijah acted in flesh to say, let me die, when Jezebel threatened him, he died as a carnal man. But when Elijah said, let the God that answered by fire be the God, God brought fire. It's, listen, <laughs> it's time for us to call the God that answered by fire. Not the God that answered by social media. God does not answer by social media. <laughs> he does not answer by flesh. Are you hearing me? Ask your neighbor, what does your God answer with? Yeah. Uh, the answer by social media. The answer by Facebook. You know what God said? Every one of us now, use your platforms. Use your Facebook. Use your YouTube. Use your TikTok to preach God's word. This is the prophecy for the last day. Use all your platforms. I didn't say spread news. Don't spread news. Say, I'm spreading the news. I had this one. Have you had that? Have you had that? Uh, Sister Pauline is the one dating Sister Maxwell's husband. 
That is, you are, you are stirred by Jezebel. You are daughter of Jezebel. And you know, if you read about Jezebel very well, there's not only daughters of Jezebel, there are prophets of Jezebel. Because when the prophets of God were starving, the Bible said they were prophets eating at the table of Jezebel. We are yet to see a lot of things. This is time to build your faith privately. Don't, because they will come after every one of us. It's not, it's not, it's not issue of uh, the leaders or they will come after every individual secretly. Even if you are not famous, you are not. They will come. Jezebel will come for you. The Antichrist is not coming for only prophets or pastors. It's coming for everyone that profess to be a Christian. Are you ready? It's coming. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Facebook is a carnal weapon. YouTube is a carnal weapon. All social medias are carnal weapons. It only becomes spiritual. When it's God's word that you are sharing there, that's when it becomes spiritual. The word of God. I want to respond. Comment. It's a lie. People are lying. Who sent you? Huh? Who sent you? <laughs> Who sent you? Do you know, before, this, before the key Jesus, the Bible say, witness came against him. People came to witness against him. Some said, he said he would destroy this temple and build it in three days. The Bible say, he said nothing. There was no Christian then to comment to say, no, he didn't say it too. It shows that we lack relationship in the secret place. We don't want to respond to everything that is happening in the public. We don't have secret life. We don't have a God that sees in the secret. We don't have it. We don't have a relationship with him. It's also shown that the day the devil will come after you, you don't even you, this, you don't have weight. You still react. In 2020, there's nothing I didn't hear about myself. And do you know what? All the members I have then, the, 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 the church commerce, literally, they were sending me messages to say, we are no longer coming to church again. But I'm telling you, literally, people that call themselves Christians, we are no longer coming to church again. Thank you for all you have done for us, Prophet. I was deserted. Someone I took clothes like this into my bedroom. A man is my friend. He can, can come, you sit. We are talking. A prophet told him that I want to kill him. You think he did not believe? He believed and started spreading it. And he took another person there that was from the church that was also close to me to the prophet. The prophet said, don't ever put any of your money in that altar. That, that prophet you are saying have tied your destiny. Oh, I was deserted. You know how dry 2020 was? Where different rumors was going on. Churches were closed. Now there was no church for me to come out to start defending myself. And that's when I knew that 70% of people that were calling themselves members of the church are Jezebel. They, 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 are mess they get revelation from Jezebel. They deserted me, I'm telling you. What am I saying? They ran away. Everybody ran away. One day I will show you the story and show you in details. I was confused. And one night I woke up. I said, oh Lord, even if I lose everything, nothing, I'm not going anywhere from you. We die together. Because there's no way I could reply. And the Lord said, are you saying that about me? Because throughout those days, I could not sleep on the bed. It was so troublesome that I would sleep on the ground. Midnight, I wake up, I can't sleep. It's as if there's a pain in my heart. I've never seen that kind of experience once. Lila said that. 
the Lord appeared to me and said, how many people were you seeing before in your ministry? He said, 300, 500. He said, do you know how many people are in this world? Then, I said, six billion. He said, you have not seen enough of this world. Forget them. Just focus on me. Not even seen one billion people you are. Let them focus on me. I'm the God of hosts. I'm the God of all flesh. Today, I am seeing the God of hosts walking around me. Walking through me. It's the same thing I'm asking you. Have you lost money? devil strip you of anything? Are you in any difficult situation? God is asking you, what have you seen compared to the billions in this world? What have you lost? I created the world in six days. Do you know what you are seeing? Forget about it. Just focus on me. All those things you are seeing, you will have them in abundance. You are from Zimbabwe, Namibia, Sibiri, all your flag, you came from different places. Then one soap, I've never seen one person come from far, say they came from, raise your flag, wave it. See US there, isn't that? See US there. See, everywhere. That time, we don't, you don't even know me there in Mozambique. In uh, Botswana, as close to us here, nobody knew me there. So, don't allow the devil to deceive you that you have lost everything. Your destiny is so colorful and bright. I'm telling you, you have not seen anything yet. Oh my God. In your mind, you think the devil is delaying you. It's a lie. When that thing was happening, everybody was running away from me. There's that thing. That is when that scripture came to fulfill that eyes have not seen. So all those 500 people you have seen, what I want to do for you, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It does not come to the heart of men. What I want to do to, for you. Everything you are going through, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It has not come to the heart of man what God is preparing for you. Stop crying. Stop worrying yourself. Stop blaming yourself. I held on to that word. How many people have I seen? Wow. Only in South Africa we can have up to 70 million people. And I've only seen 500. Ah, there are still more. Forgetting the things that are behind. Then I begin to press into the mark of the high calling. Now, in less than a year, we are more, 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 more than what we used to be. More, more. I believe God. I don't care the news Jezebel is sending. I don't care what is happening around me. There's something I saw that the natural eyes did not see. There's something I heard that the natural ear have not heard. There's something that has been revealed to my heart that the carnal mind cannot understand. That is what I believe. Please change what you are believing. God is still at work. Don't 
don't sink, don't sink. No, don't sink in where that the devil is trying to make you sink. No. That is not all. Everything you are seeing around is the devil that is still playing. God is about to reveal himself. Get ready for the best. This year of the supernatural. Get ready. Because the best is here. It has come. When Job lost everything he had, lost all his children, lost his possession, the Bible say, in that, I, I'm beginning to understand that scripture more now. Eyes have not seen, ears have not. So all what Job saw before and had before, that's not what God wanted to do. The Bible said God made Job twice as great as he used to be. I mean everything Job was seeing, he said that he was rich before. That was not what God wanted to do. He wanted to make him twice more than what he has before. That's enough. Eyes have not seen. <laughs> Nobody has seen what God is planning for you. Nobody. Not even you. Your physical eyes have not seen it. Your physical ears have not heard it. My God is walking. They thought they've kidnapped and buried him. But the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite. They go and send these judgments to the house of Jezebel. The same place you killed Naboth, the dogs will lick your blood there. It is not over for you yet. The battle is not over. Say, oh Lord, oh Lord. I am not giving up on you. I trust in you. I believe in you. That which eyes have not seen, that ears have not heard, I'm seeing you doing it for me. This 2024, I'm seeing you doing it for me. In the name of Jesus, say, Oh Lord, strengthen my faith, strengthen my belief to hold on to you. To believe your word. Open your mouth and pray that prayer.